Um, it started off with Adam Smith's uh, proposition, which is, if he was to lose his little finger tomorrow, he would not sleep tonight. But provided he never saw them, he will snore with the most profound security over the ruin of a hundred millions of his brethren. And the destruction of that immense multitude seems plainly an object less interesting to him than this paltry misfortune of his own. The analyst yawns into his screen. He had high hopes for 191232-3-1.mp4, filmed as it was by a poet. The analyst has long harboured a fantasy of stumbling upon clandestine footage of a real-life poetry reading amongst the target's files. But all he found was the usual stream of images he will tag as intimate. The same strained positions, the same under-eyes and the frightened way that they look at themselves to seduce him. The unstable furniture they drape themselves on. Oh, the furniture. That is what the analyst finds himself dreaming about. The softly sagging shelves and the never open books that dare to stand on them. Which insane librarian has put these gilt volumes here behind the faces straining at the foreground's leash? Who waters this happy ficus, condom magenta, in the stage lighting? He wakes with a sense that something is missing, and when he checks, he can't believe he did not see it before. The target's right hand has no little finger. Inside an empty honey jar, under a red screw cap, five or six living bees crawling, half dead, over an amputated finger. This is the video next in line. Planned to be followed by a video of broken windows and a million pieces of glass blown to bits in the explosion at the government quarter. That same day, a semi-automatic gun blew four little fingers straight off fleeing kids at a youth camp in the pouring rain. Inside the government quarter, five murals painted by Picasso, no Guernica, but murals by such names as the fisherman, the beach, and the seagull. How far does an explosion, a bullet, a drop of rain travel? Not far. Not even through the alphabet. It stops before it reaches the letter Y. How far does a finger reach from Celan's Todesfuge to Dickinson's If I Should Die? I don't think so. I don't think so. The world ends here. By our letter, by our finger, where the bees as bustling go. Today, I stormed the Parliament building. I forced the illegitimate protesters from the door of the Parliament building. A slight bruise on my little finger turns out to have been black rubber from the handle of my badminton racket. The slight pain washes off and I find myself nodding kindly to strangers. My heart stops on the lumpy bee road following the St. Teeth Carnival. As the tide comes in on the Norfolk coast, I wade out to the toddler hooked on the black rocks. I am wrapped in my bedsheets and taken to a hospital where agents of the state serve me poison. I am not going to play football in China. I laugh at my friend's little finger, cocked as though drinking tea with the Queen until the grenade explodes. Until I expired in California, I was Minnie Mouse. For making myself a victim of a Westminster VIP paedophile ring, I enter my cell. On my smallest knuckle, there is a milky scar split by growth into legs and wings. As a child, I was forced to wait every morning for it to return from its work at the frosty window and sink back under my skin before leaving for school. I am tearful as my stunt double breaks my back. My daughter falls from a cruise ship window. The hairs on my little finger are unstoppable. I will not face a rape charge in Las Vegas. In my experience, it's the only part of the body completely useless for sex. I am lined up on the gallery floor by the Iranian crew. I line up the British crew on the gallery floor of my ship. I feel anxious suddenly that my little finger is glossier 
in the little fingers of the friends that I most respect? Is there a correlation between those with smart little fingers and those who are rewarded with status and wealth? Since when do I dislike little fingers based on their relative glossiness? Since now, since I mislaid my life on the way home from the funeral, since I spilled into the sea in a remote and pristine region of Patagonia, since I dispersed 40,000 litres of diesel across my churning surface, since I swelled through the palace gardens holding the rainbow flag, since I sprayed bullets at a garlic festival, since the smell lingered on my little finger. But there is no correlation. There is no correlation between heart and earth between ribs and roots, between chest bone and chestnut, between underlay herbal and upper lip. There is no correlation between eyelid and iliac crest, bone marrow and birch stem, stomach, mouth and skull conch. When you dream, there is a slight twitch in your left lip finger, but you dream of nothing between chin and sea, between sweater and jeans, femoral head and aspen leaf, upper lip.